guitar day. This is my new guitar, and I wanted to share it with you guys. So, this is a 1997 Ibanez Universe. Uh, the name or code of this model is a UV7SBK. The catchy Ibanez name. Um, but I really, really like this thing. Uh, I'm going to tell you why. I used to have a universe back when I was about 16 years old, I think. Um, I had the last uh, Japanese made universe model made, which was the uh, one that had like the mirror scratch guard and we obviously had the um, fancy inlays and it was, it was a lot more kind of uh, jazzy looking than this. Not, not jazz in the... No. Um, but unfortunately I sold it. Um, I, I had it about the same time that I went to ACM in Guildford, which is where I studied. And um, I, I met um, a great teacher of mine called Michael Caswell, who I've talked about before, who's really sadly no longer with us. Um, but he kind of told me it was time to graduate to a, to a grown-up's guitar, which was, um, he wanted me to get a strapped at the time. I was about to get into sort of pop session stuff. And completely in his defense, an Ibanez Universe was probably not going to be the right guitar for that sort of gig. Um, so I ended up letting it go and accumulating various more sensible guitars over the years. Um, until recently, I was demoing um, Haynes Guitars, which is my lovely blue strap, which you might have seen in other videos, at the Birmingham Guitar Show. And I, um, I happened to stumble across the Ibanez stand and found a guitar almost exactly like my one. I couldn't believe it. I hadn't seen one in the flesh for years and years and years. And immediately rushed over and, and asked the guys if it was for sale. And their um, fantastic demo guy, Lee Wraith, um, had actually just picked it up for himself. It had been for sale in one of the other stands across the hall. Lee had seen it and instantly bought it, and I don't blame him for a second. But he let me have a play with it, and I was immediately kind of flooded with um, nostalgia. And I also just remembered what great guitars Ibanez are. You kind of forget, um, because I think sometimes, you know, maybe you think, oh, it's, you know, if you're a rock guy or if you're a metal guy, that's your thing. But they're just generally great guitars. So I started hunting. And I was looking for one just like my old one. And I, I found a, a couple, but they weren't in great condition. And I kind of, with that sort of aesthetic, you kind of want them to be fairly sort of mint. And then I came across this one, which I'd never seen before. And it's pretty beaten up. I'm going to talk to you more about that in a second. But I'd never seen an all black one. So I started doing a bit of digging. And it turns out that this particular model was only made for one year, which was 1997. Um, and it's referred to as the, I think it's the silver dot model. Um, basically everything's kind of blacked out um, and it was the last one they made like this before. The kind of fancy one and then no more Japanese made universes have been created since then sadly, which is, which is a real shame I think. And I don't know, it just kind of appealed to me for two reasons. One, I like the uniqueness of something that was only made for a year. Um, two, I'm kind of, you know, fairly drawn to sort of miserable aesthetic of, of, of black things. So obviously this kind of suited me down to the ground. And as you can see, or I don't know if you can see, but it, it's pretty beaten up. Um, this, I believe, has spent most of its life in Japan. So aside from a couple of sort of fairly substantial dinks to the body, to the paintwork, there's also a lot of corrosion on it. Um, so the Floyd is like deeply kind of corroded and pitted. Pretty much all the screws have got real kind of rust on. And it hasn't actually been super well looked after, to be honest. Um, I'd say that the locking nuts at the top have all been really kind of over tightened at some point. So um, some of the uh, screw holes are sort of cross threaded and um, We've got a, a few other issues like the uh, volume and the tone. The pots have been replaced and the knobs have been replaced. These used to have the kind of black and white Ibanez knobs with the numbers on. So there's quite a few things that have been messed with and I kind of really like the idea of bringing it back to full health. So I picked it up 
And I started looking at it and looking at what's wrong with it. And I've started kind of sourcing parts. There's, there's a fantastic Ibanez resource in the States um, called Ibanez Rules. There's a guy called Rich who seems to know absolutely everything about them. And so through him and through another um, guy called Max at Custom Guitars in the UK, I've started acquiring some bits. Um, so I'm basically, I'm just going to do it up. I'm going to replace this with one of exactly the same spec, but one that isn't damaged because also a lot of these joints have been over tightened. And at the moment you can't, um, you can't raise the height uh, of the trem because somebody has, has broken one of these. So this is going to be my kind of little project for the next few months. I'm kind of slowly acquiring, you know, period correct knobs. I'm getting replacement screws. I'm getting a new bridge. I'm getting um, some longer screws here because you can't buy this part anymore. So I'm going to use a um, longer screw to get past the sort of damaged bit of the thread and just generally give it like a really good setup and sort some of the electronics out. So you will see this again um, for sure. Um, I will keep you updated with it and when I get it to a point where I'm happy with it, I will share it again. Uh, as for the track that I kind of wrote with this, um, you might notice it's not, it's not like the sort of thing that I'd usually write on this channel. Um, and that's because it's a lot more like the sort of thing that I would write for my own project. So I have my own solo project called Ghosts, where when I'm recording, I write and record everything on it, apart from drums and do the singing and everything else. Um, and then I have some of my best friends who come and play that stuff with me live. Um, so that's my first band. And I have another band which does a similar sort of stuff called Black Sky Research. And this is a new one. I'm going to post you links to all these in the description below. So if you feel inclined to go check them out, you can. And this is a new band that I'm doing with um, one of my best friends, Luke, who's also in Ghosts. And um, Mikey Chapman, who used to be in a band called Mallory Knox. And we had uh, Jason Bold who is currently the drummer for Bullet My Valentine, but um, previously was in Pitch Shifter and has done loads of cool stuff. He put down all the drums on the EP that's coming out. And um, also our good friend Lee, who's a phenomenal bass player. So I'm gonna post uh, a little clip of our first single for that band now. The weather outside grows ever dark. You're ever present in the concerns of my show you another clip for my band Ghosts now. I kind of choose not to fill this channel with that sort of stuff simply because I'm very much going to be focusing all my efforts towards the kind of session heroes angle and content around that, um, you know, tuition based content. I have something coming out hopefully in a few months, which I think you guys are going to love. So this channel is going to be 
much more focused around those sort of players, 80s and 90s session guys, their techniques, their sounds, um, and teaching you some of their some of their stuff. So that's kind of why I decided to keep those those two kind of parts of my life separate. But by all means, please, if you enjoy the sort of stuff you just heard, um, please go and support those bands. Um, obviously, it's on Spotify and stuff, but also you can get the album on Bandcamp and everywhere else. I will put links below. Um, but yes, you will be seeing this guitar again for sure when I've um, when I've kind of refurbed it a little bit, and I'll keep you guys updated on it. But for now, hope you enjoyed the demo. I think you'll agree that under all the rust and damage, there's definitely a guitar in there that's worth saving. Um, so I will do my best to do that. And yeah, I'll um, I'll show you guys how I get on. See you all soon.